What are we starting with? Intolerable cruelty? Yeah, we'll go down the line here. Um, so this is probably, in from looking from the outside, the biggest lull of the Coen's career. Yeah, Coen what Brothers rom-com. That rom-com. Yeah. And then that, the one after, too, it's like... The Coen similar. Brothers goofy heist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot I think of they were just trying different shit at this point. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't it's know, especially with the well, we'll get into the next one, I guess, when we get there. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, if we just like, want to go and talk about starting off, I was like, I, I liked the opening scene. I feel like it was like, I don't know, Coen Brothers esque type shit. I don't know, yeah. finding like the pool boy sleeping with your wife. Yeah. Um, but then I don't know, going forward from there, I, I liked, um, the like lawyery jokes about how lawyers have like no soul and shit and how like the owner of the firm is like how he keeps like listing off the different things that he like charged, like all the fucking billable hours, like mm. all the fucking lunches charged. I thought mm. was fucking hilarious. Like I, that stuff was all like good for me, but I feel like there was like. I don't know, I feel like it almost like crossed the line a couple times. Like, when, look, George Clooney is, like, he's supposed to be, like, one of the best divorce court lawyers, probably the best divorce court lawyer in L.A., and then he goes to this conference in Vegas and is giving this speech about how love matters and shit because this this woman, like, and they all are, like, on his side by the end of the speech, like, are you fucking yeah. kidding me? Like, <laughs> yeah. what? Yeah. I don't know. I just thought that was, like, so fucking a unbelievable. Stupid. Like, yeah. yeah. I thought it like, worked just ridiculous. for the zaniness of it all. Where, like, I and, like, I had thought about that. Like, like, he's, like, like literally, like, they, fist like, pumping by the end of the like, yeah. like, yeah. like, like, trying but, to, like, yeah. make fun of, like, rom-coms by doing this? Like, because it's so mm. fucking stupid. But, like, I don't yeah, maybe. maybe, I don't know. I, I couldn't really tell, to be honest. Yeah. So I got right. you. I kind of bought in pretty early on it, honestly. Uh... I'm just gonna say i enjoyed this one a lot more and i think it's a lot better than some of the other ones we've watched already like I mean, it's gonna be higher in my rankings yeah it's on a pure entertainment level it's just way oh, more yeah. and it's way more entertaining it's way more fun it's got great shit going on and a lot of in a lot of the moments uh some of the shit's not great but uh yeah it's like a good attempt it's a different movie by them for sure yeah uh, yeah. yeah i, I... Yeah. The thing that stood out for to me in this one was just like the dialogue, how witty it was for everybody, how smart it was. But I did just I don't know, I was just kinda like I think I was just going through the motions of it after I was like, ah, rom com. I don't know, I didn't really feel like the Coens in this one as much. Yeah, you know? didn't really even either. in the way it was shot, it didn't really feel like the Coens brother. This Coen one brother does thing. have multiple different writers. I will say. I don't know. Okay. And I looked up like some of the credits between the writers because there's three other people that are not the Coens that wrote it. Yeah. And one of them is like Big Trouble. These are all like kind of early 2000s movies that have like this zany. It, it's like you, I can see why they mixed it with the Coens, but I agree that you can feel like outside influence mm. of that. Yeah. Maybe the genre more, but just also other people's voices in the room. Um, yeah, I, I think know. the biggest thing that was different was just that the idea of it was a genre. Like it was a rom com. So, like, I don't know. That's just what stood out. Otherwise, I feel like in terms of rom com, it was definitely an elevated rom com. Like sure. the dialogue was there. I mean, I thought it was pretty smart. And I mean, you know what's gonna happen at the end of it, but like it was nice to see that Billy Bob was actually an actor in the mm -hmm. guy, the original guy. I thought that was pretty opera, interesting. Dude, and like how like card, I his line yeah. of like she fucking gotcha or whatever like gotcha. how it lines up with them watching yeah, yeah they yeah. nailed your ass yeah. Yeah. yeah that was pretty good yeah the the beginning yeah. opening sequence dovetails to the end kind of nicely you know yeah. They, yeah they make it work yeah but i i actually really enjoyed enjoyed this one i mean compared to the one that follows but and a couple of the other cohen ones that we've watched even old brother were out there were art though i enjoyed this one quite a bit more just on a pure entertainment level i thought okay. it, the pacing was pretty good i mean it made me laugh I, I, george clooney is kind of awesome like he's really yeah. good in this yeah i feel like um, uh it's Catherine zeta jones right is yeah, the other yeah. yeah i feel like they both had pretty good chemistry throughout the whole Definitely. movie too yeah, For sure. yeah. yeah. 
And it's like, yeah, like an untraditional rom-com where it's like two people that are kind of like above the or the romance of it all and are just playing yeah. the game of it all, you know, and yeah. you can kind of like sure. watch that go. I think it kind of falls apart a bit in the second half. Once the time jump <clears> of <throat> six months happened, it becomes a little bit sloppy and a little bit like yeah, awesome definitely. Time. Yeah, I think that's yeah. where I started to feel just like the lull. Like, eh. My interest yeah. just went, I think, a little bit. Yeah, it definitely ramps it to the end kind of nicely when the the reveal happens, like when they see the Billy yeah. Bob with the, with Bruce Campbell, <laughs> you know, like yeah. acting. Yeah, yeah I was. I couldn't remember sure. if it was this movie that he was in or the next one. He's both. Bruce both. Campbell. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! Okay, gotcha. Yeah, they brought him back. <clears throat> yeah, it's neat. But yeah, a lot of good moments. Uh, I thought the Cedric the Entertainer stuff actually worked pretty well in this movie, and I was kind of worried it wouldn't at first. But he I kinda, agree. Kind of mixed in pretty easily with it. Uh, uh, George Clooney's buddy was decent. You know, I don't even know who that guy is. I haven't really seen him, but he was pretty good. It's like a lot of like heightened comedy that they some even the reality shifts where it's like not it's clearly not even real anymore. You know, like yeah. Uh, what's the it's like Heinz von Baron von whatever the fuck his name is and like that whole sequence when he comes in it just like goes so high and uh, I don't know I liked it I I respect a movie like that a rom-com like that more where it just like doesn't give a shit about like the reality of the world as much Mm -hmm. but yeah I was I was uh, listening to a podcast actually because Drive Drive Away Dolls came out and that's what Ethan's solo uh, movie? Dude, I was actually and, just reading about that before we did this pod. It, oh, yes, yeah, it, it seems like they balance each other out pretty well. Like Joel is kind of like the film student, like pretty particular, and then Ethan's kind of brings in that zany, silly shit. So and for sure. So yeah. So now when I'm watching these or looking back on them, I'm like, okay, so that's that's what Ethan contributed, or that's what Joel would contribute, and you can just tell kind of where they're. I was actually like yeah. trying to figure that out um, based on like who they list as the director and executive producer, but I don't know. I had never like actually done research on like who's the like who has more. Apparently they on both like switch off. Actually, yeah. the next movie, The Lady Killers, is where they finally like make the jump of they're both listed as director. Finally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Maybe they just gotcha. like, just, like ceremonial after that. But yeah, yeah. dude, but I heard that. uh it's called Drive Away Girls? Drive Away Dolls. Drive Away Dolls? Yeah, dude. That fucking bombed. Like, apparently it had a $2.5 million opening weekend. Well, it got, like... Like, that's fucking... Canned, not canned, but, like, pushed terrible. to the side when the strike started. And gotcha. I don't know, it, it's got, like, no... Like, I didn't even... The only reason I know about it is because I'm, I'm in the depths, you know? So, of course, I'm going to, like... Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, realistically, I only saw, like... like I didn't. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't actually know it was out. I saw a trailer for it uh, when I went to go see Poor Things a couple weeks ago. But yeah, I don't know. yeah, yeah I, I saw a trailer for it and I was like, damn. So I went to look up Show Times for it, and that same day we saw another trailer for it, and Sarah was like, that looks like your kind of movie. I'm like, I'm glad you mentioned that because I was looking up Show Times for it. So I mean, I feel like it's my kind of movie, or you know, I just don't think it. From what I've heard, it just doesn't have that the Coen Brothers like touch. It's just kind of silly. But I, don't yeah. know. I know you watched it, Matt. What did you I think? Did watch it. Yeah. Um, to me, it feels almost like he kind of like gave a lot of the power and authority in the tone and everything to his wife. Um, not yeah. in a, not in like a bad way, but like there is like Coen energy, but it's not chiseled and it's pretty like the editing choices to me are just like kind of yeah. strange and it's i don't know every it's when you, when you would see like a low runtime i can i still am getting fooled where it's like that's an 82 minute movie and i was like ready to right. love it for like it's short runtime and it Holy feels shit. way too long and wait it's like 82 well. minutes yeah it's like they didn't have that's insane. Short, yeah. and it's like yeah. that's shocking honestly when you get into the editing room and you oh. think you have to like cut to that amount but uh this is also written and was like it, they started this project in the what was it the nineties when it, like yeah. the original idea it, it was called the driveway dykes but then they had to obviously change the the title and put that in there I don't know they do put that in there at the end so it's like yeah hard 
Um, but I just wonder if it would be different, like if it was made back in the '90s, like if it would have fit nicely into the '90s corner of probably. just shot. Yeah, I think yeah. they would have been better. I think because it yeah. takes place in the '90s, and to be quite honest, I don't even know why. Like it just doesn't even feel like it's a. Thing. Yeah. It feels out of time, but not in the right way. You know, yeah. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. But, uh, no, definitely. It's fine. I was wanting more just because it was a Cohen Brothers. I compared it to Tragedy of Macbeth, and find that these two need to get back together and start making movies yeah. together again but uh mm-hmm. they're i'll watch both their shit it's just not to the standard that either of them could do now that you know it you know yeah right so anyway yeah but, um small but yeah. There. oh yeah for sure i mean we were gonna maybe do those movies at the end I don't, we don't have to anymore we don't, we don't want to but uh no, we can that one tragedy of macbeth they're definitely not the same <laughs> they're like, I don't yeah. know, like different attempts yeah. but as yeah, far I guess... as in... yeah go ahead mm, no nah, we'll finish this one up and then i'll talk about it i was saying as far as intolerable uh cruelty goes um i just wanted to make a note that i I, don't know, I just wanted to write this down that anytime any type of media cuts to the stenographer and is like where were we and they're like you they did they just like flatly state whatever was last said those for some reason those moments always work i don't know what it is definitely this one worked especially because he like thought about it and she kept listening off like she kept saying the bone bone line and he was like Mm -hmm. thinking about it. he's like okay now i'm back in it so (laughs) it it really super worked in that scene it's that scene for sure but it just made me think like of all the other scenes that i've seen that and they always work it's i don't know it's just like something about going like outside the story for a second and then like engaging with it again maybe. Back but, yeah. yeah uh that and the like finale sequence i guess you'd say with like the inhaler and the gun being i thought yeah. that works pretty well it, i don't know it's kind of stupid but like the chaos of it all added up to me and it it like worked so yeah it was fun i mean yeah. Yeah, for a second there i thought like george Clooney was gonna get his head blown off like i couldn't tell like where we were going so that's yeah. kind of what worked for me you know yeah fucking tragic for that one dude <laughs> that's a wheezy what's his name wheezy what <laughs> yeah i couldn't remember <laughs> yeah i'm gonna give this one three and a half stars you know i think it's not bad i gave it three i think, that's, I, think I three or three and a half i can't remember yeah i went on three yeah yeah I'd always heard like it was so weak and like not like with any of the other movies, which it's kind of not. But to me, to its credit, in my opinion. But I guess some people I can see why people don't like it. I think it's just the whole genre of it all. I think is what kind of turns some people off because you you, you hear Cohen's, you immediately you know you think Fargo and you think Big Lebowski, shit like that. Where so, you can't put them in a box, man. 